Me, Snipe Down, arguably one of the best sharpshooters in Halo history. So when he said he was going to be coaching competitive Halo for two weeks, I knew I couldn't pass that up. But it wasn't long until that big price tag came out that the critics came out too. See, the bootcamp was designed for people to break into the top 1%, and I already managed to do that without the help of Snipe Down. So for all of you who want to know if it was worth it, well, let me save you 10 minutes. Yes. Yes, it was absolutely worth it, but not for the reasons you might expect, which I'll get into later, but let's get to the point of this video by sharing with you everything Snipedown taught me. Oh, and you're gonna wanna stick to the end of the video because I've already booked a session with another pro, and at the end of the video, I'll let you know who it is. So in the first section, fighting mechanics, we went over four main things, settings, aim, movement, and combat applications. Now for the settings section, this is really all personal preference, but I can tell you what most pros will do, including Snipe Down. Most of their video settings are all on low performance. I'll put a screenshot of what I have, and if there are any specific settings you wanna know, just ask in the comments and I'll let you know what Snipe had. When it comes to aiming, it's pretty basic stuff here. Snipe showed us two methods of tracking. One is to mimic the opponent's movements. This is primarily left stick aiming. And the other way is to make slight adjustments with the right stick. The best way to practice this is just through repetition. Even the pros go into training every day and just shoot bots. Next up was movement. Similar to aiming, getting quicker and more efficient movement comes down to practice and repetition. Snipe down goes into training and will just drop slide and super slide everywhere. Now, the final part of this section was combat applications. In Halo, there's a few things you wanna always be able to do without taking your thumbs off the sticks. One of the most important things is dropping your weapon. So Snipe Down recommends getting a controller with a paddle or using a button combination that allows you to do that. Personally, I use bumper jumper like Snipe Down and use a paddle to drop the weapon. I also use a paddle to sprint, but that's all personal preference. Next was weapon combos. Now, a lot of people don't like to piss them. Piss. <laughs> A lot of people don't like to pick up the plasma pistol. In ranked, you only spawn with one weapon, and too often do people run by weapons like the plasma pistol without thinking how they could use it. Snipe Down never does this. He always picks up another weapon, and the best way to get better with these other weapons is to go into bot training. The final part of this section talked about getting the maximum output from your life. There were five things that Snipe Down recommended. Always using your frags. Make sure you're playing for the map pickups like the power weapons and equipment, taking an extra second to wait for shields to begin charging, try and only take fights near teammates, and when you can and when you know a teammate is low on health, trade in for them. All right, we're moving on to the second section of the boot camp, which was going over competitive game modes. We'll start off with Oddball. The key goal in Oddball, as Snipe Down explains, is to be able to create and break setups. One of the most important parts when you are the defending team, and I didn't know this, but always make sure you have the ball in your hands as teammates are spawning. If you don't do this, then they'll spawn likely away from you. And depending on where your teammates spawn, you'll have a better understanding as to maybe where the pressure points are coming from and where the enemies are spawning. Now, if you have the ball in your hands and your teammates spawn to the left of you, that's the direction you want to head because you know the enemy is probably coming from the right. So remember, staying alive is the number one goal in any oddball set. So when you have the ball, always be looking to move forward towards your teammates as they come off spawn. Now, if you're on the attacking team, the most important thing you can do is keep track of the ball carrier as well as your teammate spawns. When you're able to quickly recognize the numbers game, you can then block off enemy spawns and force the ball carrier to drop the ball. And if you remember from my first point, if you are not holding the ball while your teammate is spawning, they will not spawn with you. So when you force the ball carrier to drop drop the ball, it allows you to control where the enemy will spawn. Now let's move on to Slayer. Snipe Down consistently mentions having a wolf pack mentality. This wolf pack mentality is split up into four areas. The first one is spawn splitting. Spawn splitting can be simplified to six simple steps. So step one is to get the numbers advantage against the opponents. Once you have the numbers advantage, whether it's 4v3, 3v2, you're going to want to push the enemies to finish them off and stack to the spawn timers. Now step three is when those first enemies died that initially gave you the numbers
Reaper's advantage, they're now spawning. So you're going to want to push into their spawn and kill them, therefore blocking their spawn from their teammates, keeping them split up and allowing you to take step five, which is to continue to catch the new spawners coming up on the other side of the map. And step six is just rinse and repeat. The next Slayer strategy was anchoring. Now anchoring can mean a few different things, but essentially it comes down to these three things. You're going to want to hold a position of power on one side of the map. This position should then block enemy spawns from flipping and getting behind your team. And if you've done a good enough job, you should have the best angle on the map, therefore being able to give info to your team on enemy positions and spawns. Now the third strategy for Slayer is always playing the power weapons. Now this doesn't mean going for them when there's five seconds left before they spawn, but this means setting up for them 30 seconds prior. Sure, there might only be two rockets in the rocket launcher, but if you're able to get two quick kills with them, you can use the first strategy like spawn splitting to continue to reap the benefits of having those power weapons in the first place. The fourth and final strategy for Slayer was really something Snipedown emphasizes in all game types, but this was playing your life. Now, what this means is getting the maximum output for your life, and one of the main benefits of doing this is you can fully utilize the sandbox. For example, being ready for shock or spike grenades, and on a map like Bazaar, that's potentially four kills, which is more than the power equipment. But if you don't play your full life, you'll run into less opportunities where you can fully utilize the sandbox. So make sure you're doing what you can to extend your life as long as possible. Remember, you can look at Slayer in two main ways. First to 50 kills or first to 50 deaths. The next game type that we went over was strongholds. Snipedown's mantra for this one was finding the path of least resistance. He went over three main strategies to focus on. The first one was how to break a hold. The best way to do this is to come off of spawn with a goal. So you can use the info in your death cam to decide what your goal should be. But without a goal, it's going to be way harder for you to break a hold the enemy has on you. So make sure you use your death cam to figure out where your teammates are going and possibly where the enemies are going. That way when you spawn, you know where to put your focus. Next was gaining and maintaining control. Now the best way to do this is to find strong lines of sight. These are through power positions and understanding how the spawns work. Remember when we talked about anchoring? Same strategy here. Snipedown then showed us a strategy on recharge and live fire. Now on recharge, the best zone to have control over is A. This is top elevator. The routes from C to A or from B to A, they don't offer the best protection. However, from A to C or from A to B, you have great sight lines and plenty of cover. So on recharge and strongholds, make sure you always make zone A a priority. The second map we focused on was live fire. Snipedown says the most important area to control on live fire when playing strongholds is nest. The team who controls nest typically controls B, but an important part of controlling nest is you control an enemy spawn. So if you're at nest, you control B, and you have teammates in A, the enemy will almost every time spawn at dummies near that drop wall. The final strategy for strongholds that Snipedown went over was being able to pivot off of enemy's actions. See, if you know the enemy is rushing in, let's say off of a death cam, take the extra second to go for a micro flank. You should still be able to get into the fight quickly, but from an angle the opponent won't suspect. Another way to play off your enemy's actions is to match their play speed. If they're playing slow, you want to value your life and use your team's setup and position to your advantage. That way you don't overextend. The next game type we went over was Capture the Flag. Snipedown says to win Capture the Flag games, you have to master the art of distraction. The first step is manipulating spawns. In order to control the spawns, you need to gain control of the mid-map power positions. Once you have control of the mid-map, you have to identify the right opportunity to breach the enemy base. Once you establish yourself as a legitimate threat inside the enemy base, the opponents then have to react to you. If you're able to maintain these positions for quite a long time, you can then capitalize by creating a spawn trap snowball effect. If done correctly, you can just run the enemy flag over and over while they're stuck in their spawns, staggered and out of control. So manipulating spawns is one thing, but slaying and capitalizing on the pressure from it is another. So if you do find yourself slaying and breaking into the enemy base, it's likely time for one of your teammates to pull the flag. Now, here's the important part. You 
you still being inside the base, not holding the flag, become the most important player on the map because the enemy then has to make a play to get you out of their base. Otherwise, you're just going to be a distraction, preventing the enemy from chasing you down and your teammate with the flag. See, the longer you stay alive, the more you're doing for your team and against the other team. That's how you capitalize on pressure. The final point on capture the flag that Snipe Down went over was things you need to think about when pulling the flag. For example, before you pull the flag, here are some questions you need to ask yourself. How many enemies are alive and where are they on the map? Where are your teammates? And what portions of the map are you controlling? Where are the dead enemies likely to respawn based on this information? Which leads to the final question of where should you run the flag? Now let's say you spawn and the enemy has your flag. Snipe Down explains that you basically basically have two options, and each one depends on how far the enemy has your flag. If your team is slowing down the enemy carrier, it's probably best that you go immediately to your team and help them finish the job. But if the enemy flag carrier is not being slowed down, you need to buy your team time. And in this case, you need to start a counter pull. If done correctly, you should be able to buy your team a little bit of time so they can spawn and come help you return the flag. The final part of the boot camp was decision making, and honestly deserves its own video. Make sure you subscribe so you know when that video comes out. I hope this video was helpful to someone. It's time to reveal the next pro player that's going to be coaching me. Meet Ryan Noob. Thank you, Snipedown, for helping me out.